So this is my clear and present danger story. Uh, as you can see, I'm busting out all my jackets back in the olden days that actually give you a jacket for a TV series or a um, movie that you did uh, back in the good old olden days. <laughs> um, but this story starts with, uh, with an old girlfriend, which is um, not always the best way to start a story, but I think we were fighting my keys got hidden. Again, I'm back on the bus, riding the bus to, uh, to Santa Monica for the casting. And uh, they gave me the script for Clear and Present Danger and I read it all the way there. Ended up getting off at the wrong stop, waiting around, but I was so engrossed by the story that it didn't really matter. You know, by the time I got to the audition, I um, I'd finished it and saw the sides that I had to read, probably two pages or something like that. It was it was when they find the guys, uh, the senator, or the congressman on the boat who gets slaughtered with his family. Yeah, so I had to do that scene. I met with uh, with the director Philip Noyce, who I'd never seen a man <laughs> who looked more exhausted than uh, than this poor guy, but. Uh, you know, kicked down the door, went in, said my two lines, and then that was essentially that was essentially it. Um, again, it took me two and a half hours to get there, and the audition was over in about 38 seconds. That's what I would say. Uh, I went from there, walked down to the Third Street Promenade, got a slice of pizza, went and saw my buddy who lived down there, hung out, spent the night down there, came back home, dealt with all of that rigmarole and uh, <laughs> um, just nothing, didn't hear anything for three months. And then I get a call from my agent and she says, uh, you got the job. I said, what job? She said, the ninja job. I, I don't know, whatever job was, the ninja job. Well, I'd never read to play a ninja before. Um, she told me that they're, they're sending the car uh, in a in a couple of days, and I was flying out, so the package would would arrive. So that was the days when you know they they hand delivered the packages to you. Um, so at that time, I was moving as well up to Laurel Canyon, and it was me. It was my Honda Prelude, and that was it. Um, I, I remember there was 80 steps to get up there. Uh, or to get down to my, my little guest house there. And I moved all night, all night, all night. Well, then the, the package arrived uh, uh, in the morning and I was flying to Mexico City. So I, I just took it like I was in training. I just moved everything myself, moved everything myself, everything, all the steps, all the steps, everything. Got moved in and then um, I was leaving. It was pouring down rain. Uh, I was at the back door and where I lived it was it was all covered in trees and uh, uh, it reminded me of, of uh, that shot of the exorcist where the priest is standing there by the door there was a single little kind of a decorative uh, street lamp a small one and I was closing the door and my daughter was seven days old and I'd, I'd read the packet and I was going to be flying on helicopters and jumping out of helicopters and doing a bunch of weapon stuff and jungle training and uh, it was one of those moments where I thought I, I might not ever be coming back. <laughs> and it was, a, it was a sad walk to the car that was waiting for me to take me to LAX. Um, and, and yeah, it was, it was, it was heavy, right? So I get in the car, I get, go to LAX, flying to Mexico City, like I said. Um, we get to Mexico City and it's just, just packed, right? Obviously, but then I hooked up with, uh, with Benjamin Bratt and Raymond Cruz and, uh, and Jared Chandler, who was our spec ops uh, trainer guy. And so we had our own little group there. Flew to Veracruz, got to Veracruz, got in a van, drove about 100 kilometers north to a little place called Coatepec. Now this place was the first 
uh, settlement of the Spanish in the 1500s, 1400s, and they'd established a fort that they'd converted into a hotel that had a huge, huge oak door that they would uh, lock at night, and I didn't know if it was to keep people from coming in or to keep us from <laughs> from getting out. Probably, <laughs> probably the latter to protect the little town. But um, just beautiful, just beautiful. The people were amazing. The little town was amazing. They had on the plaza uh, on Sundays it was a little festival every weekend, and uh, when we'd go into town. But we got there first thing we did the next day is we went out and we did training. Triple Canopy Jungle, uh, running interdiction raids on clandestine drug labs. Uh, we did weapons training. I had a, an M16 with a 203 grenade launcher, which was a lot of fun playing around with. Um, we went that day and then we found out that we were staying that night uh, in the jungle. And uh, uh, it, it was one of those gorillas in the mist kind of moments. It's getting dark. We're in line, walking, silent. All you can hear is your heartbeat as it got darker and darker in the mist coming out of the jungle. And when you moved, if you weren't moving correctly, the animals would go quiet. And then when you were doing it correctly, all the animal life came back to life. And it was, it was really loud, but... Um, the guy in front of you had cat eyes, little reflectors behind that glowed in the dark. And you could see when he hit a ditch or he fell out of, the, <laughs> uh, out of your view. So you knew to watch your step moving forward. But the one thing I thought uh, at that moment, I, I, I said, you didn't do enough research. I mean, are, are there spiders out here? Are there jaguars, snakes? And uh, that was just the intense fear that was, that was running through my mind. And, and it got so dark. I mean, you literally couldn't see your hand up to your face. It was, uh, it was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying. And then we had to, we had to rendezvous at a certain point. Uh, we found our contact that was there. We were able to navigate and find the, the place where the drug lab was, which was an imitation of what was going to happen in the movie. Uh, we moved out of there to our extract point, and as we got closer, we, uh, we whispered and we talked and said, uh, you know, let's, let's give our drivers a little scare. Let's see if we can sneak up on them, if we can, if we can use our spec ops tactics and be quiet enough to, uh, to get right up to these guys.